to think about AI. <coughs> Forget about artificial intelligence as a technical development of the last 20 years. It is a mindset which comes to birth around 1900, which gets evident today because it found its adequate technical implementation around 2000. Therefore, we have to read the whole 20th century as AI. So everything what we had in architecture, beginning 1880-1900, I would say this is artificial intelligence. Corbusier is artificial intelligence. And therefore, I don't like Gideon because he tries to, to describe Corbusier in the old-fashioned 19th century way. So he blocks this idea that <laughs> Corbusier is an alien. So we will, we will see that. Everything else would be inadequate. We experience a digital Copernican turn. All problems are solved by machines on flatland. So this is where we come from. Now, 18th, 19th century is flatland. Copernic in turn makes these planetary systems all around. We had that uh, last semester. So all problems are solved by machines on flatland. Urbanization. We took off and navigate a starship. We do not need a solution. All solutions are on board. We need the direction. Listening to the talks about the changing weather we can measure and the climate we can estimate and calculate, reading it as an indicator of our awakening of the awareness of our planetary body and the demand for navigation of spaceship Earth. And of course, it's frightening to see colors the first time but it's definitely not a problem. It is a situation which needs a next step to the, to the yet unknown being made. So this is always Renaissance, the Copernican turn, you are alone. You turn the things and then you are planet in a planetary solar system and you can't trust anything. Everything is fake. You can't, there's no stable ground anymore because everything is circulating. What did we take with us in our spaceship? Yes, we have to be careful, operate in cycles, do recycling to survive. What is out there? It is anything. It is a big plenty we are threatened by. The question of energy, for example. <clears throat> take energy, for example. Energy is not a resource. Energy is just there, in principle abundance. Now some numbers. The world is consuming uh, 574 extra joule of primary energy per year. The efficiency of engines is about 30 to 50 percent, which makes about 220 extra joules we are using to feed 8 billion people. And you are right, nature's photosynthesis, photosynthesis produces only 400 extra joules of resources which is neither enough, sustainable, nor good, if we consume it. But look out of the window of our spaceship, and you see that solar radiation impact to our planet is 4 million exajoules. Energy is not about resources, nature, or scarcity. It's about intellect, our planet, and the planet, the plenty. So you can... It's, it's not enough to look at the ground, look at resources to our planet. You have to look in a, in a planetary solar system scale. And there's more than enough. For example, this is factor two on, uh, 400. So this is uh, it's vector 10,000. This is nature. So this is within the starship. And this is outside the starship. So it's factor 10,000. So here this is illustrated. So for example, this is our planet, and this is one ten thousandth of our planet. So the solar radiation on this piece of land is enough to feed 8 billion people. 
if you express every 100%. Okay, huh? Very simple numbers, can check it. <laughs> so if you look at each other here, these are 10,000 points. And this is planet Earth. Yeah. So 10,000 is a lot, huh? You can have a second one, a third one, fifth one, or take all these and so get one extra, whatever, yeah? But it's not about resources, it's about internet. How to get to this radiation? So then you say, okay, it's complicated and so on. So, <laughs> just switch uh, your mindset from burning the 400 exajoules of available natural sources in here to the excess of the 4 million exajoules of solar radiation out there. Just switch from consumption, what nature is producing, to artificial photosynthesis, powering artificial intelligence, and a coexistence with nature. So the beauty of that is that you don't have to consume nature anymore. It can be a huge part. <laughs> we don't need it. So we make nice, so we don't have to make it to cut forests and uh, to, to make, we simply take, need to take the most precious berries <laughs> and say thank you to, to nature and then produce it. Beside nature. You don't need to, aerate, to, to consume it. So, but it needs another mindset. Done, of course not, huh? <laughs> so, now you say, maybe it's, uh, it's fantasy and so on. I told you that Sie suchen was, here. I told you, and I think it's very important, that uh, this shift towards uh, this Copernican, digital Copernican turn took place around 1900. And that everything from then on is AI. So therefore, I want to say, I want to just read it differently. Just these obvious numbers. To see that we are on the way. So we don't have to, it's, it's already like that. So, and obviously this switch is on its way. If we look at the factuality of numbers, things are growing beyond natural proportions. In the last 50 years, it's less than my lifespan. The global wealth increased by factor 60. <laughs> so, if, if you compare the toys I got, my kids got, my grandkids got, it's always factor 10. So the, the amount of traveling, me, my kids, grandkids, 10. The amount of buildings in the city, 1960, 1950, towards today, global scale, factor 60, sure, or in Switzerland, factor 20, at least, in my lifespan. So it's growing like hell. So this is what we are afraid of. The same with health. The indicator for health, I think, is life expectancy. So there's a lot of problem with health, but the global life expectancy increased by 20 years in my lifespan. So. <clears throat> or the amount of uh, literate people. When I was born, there had been one billion people being able to read and write. Now it's seven out of eight. So they all can read and write. It was not the case when I was born. This had been a question of experts. In the last 200 years, it's very important uh, as well, the, the, the rate of homicides went down by 90%. 
So it goes towards boring situations. Nothing happens anymore. <laughs> but in media. <laughs> So you have to, to, to imagine that, uh, for example, all the Greeks, the Greek cities, <laughs> when there was a, 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 a war with these cities, the winner killed all the inhabitants of the other city. And it was an act of mercy if only the boys and the men got killed and the women and the kids uh, uh, went to slavery. This was an act of mercy. And it was always like that. <laughs> And, and, and they, 50 percent of the people died by homicides in that time. They always killed themselves for any reason. There was only natural death, causes of death was only 50 percent. The other 50 percent just by killing. So it's important to see these numbers since. <laughs> It's getting really boring <laughs> so, and super safe. Yeah? So, I would say this is AI, especially the things of the last 50 years. This is the effect of AI. AI is driven by a new mindset. AI accesses the energy of the solar stream. AI solves all old problems. AI is a new ground. It is nutritious and things prosper in all aspects. And we don't know why and how the hell this works. Beyond all capacity of our planet. And no culture, that's very important as well, has experience in these challenges. No culture likes it. All cultures are blind to it and yet exposed. And because there is no problem, you can't know, cannot find any existing uh, uh, solution. We are alone in outer space. So it's not good news. <laughs> it's just a crazy setup. And I think this is a specification of what we, have, uh, what we had with the, with the Greeks and what we had uh, in Renaissance, and I think we experience it uh, uh, today the same. Why does AI work? Let us have a closer look at the nature of this success of AI. It turned out that the principal interests of people on this planet are not so diverse as we might expect. Everybody likes good food, everybody takes care of their kids, everybody runs for good medicine or good education, good housing, mobile phones to be mobile, safe places, decent work hanging around. We all do it in different way but we all like it. It's very important. So we don't disagree in the very fundamental things as humans, in all cultures and all times. The smartness of AI is that it delivers all its surfaces with near to no direct implications in form or structure. You can play any culture on penicillin, you can run any machine with electricity, you can talk any language with your mobile phone, and you can play any culture on the, uh, on the internet, and so on and so on. So it doesn't restrict you. Therefore, I would say, for example, I would say, what we with the international Stil and so on, these ganzen weißen Kisten 1920. The fantastic thing is that we can all the da hat man Hoffnung, da hat man dann, das sind Aliens, ne? wie Le Corbusier, da ist ein Alien, dann hoffen wir, dann, dann Krankenhaus oder in der Polizeistation und so weiter. So, dann kann man die überall hinstellen, in jede Kultur. Das ist das Fantastische an denen. Stellen Sie sich vor, man würde das mit einem äh, Schweizer Chalet gemacht haben. Geht einfach nicht. <lacht> man kann die Globalisierung nicht machen mit Schweizer Chalets. Man kann sie mit weißen Kisten machen. Und das, wenn man dann anfängt, das, das dann zu verstehen, wie ein Hospital funktioniert, also wie diese Infrastruktur, die Oberregierung versteht, funktioniert, dann kann man sie auch in Schweiz, dann kann man die anmalen, die in Schweizer Chalet. Oder in China oder in Indien wieder anders, oder in Afrika wieder anders. Aber um zu verstehen, was die neue Welt bringt, eben Penicillin, braucht man weiße Kisten als erstes. 
Das finde ich großartig. Und das sind Aliens. Die sind gelandet. Und die drehen die Welt rum. So. Und deswegen ist das das, was ich Ihnen auch immer erzähle. Das Problem ist, wenn es überhaupt eins ist, that's so easy. If there is a problem, then it is that everything gets so easy. All structures and all forms of all cultures are dissolving in the new stream of AI. We should be patient. AI is a challenge to all cultures. Nobody knows. Huh? Wealth always and only comes with education. Education needs time. People will eman emancipate and the societies will flourish with these artifacts of AI. So, in my understanding, help is only and exclusively effective with education and time. If you, if you give presents in, in material form, it's nonsense. People have to understand what they're doing, they have to learn it. That's the beauty of device boxes. boxes. They basically learn <laughs> experiences and time. <clears throat> Landscapes evolve on this new planet. This is what we call urbanization today, the prosperous industrialized farmland of today, feeding 8 billion peoples with ease, no culture or set up before has been able to. And of course there are unbearable problems not solved, but addressing them, at least pretending to take care, is part of the solution AI produces. How did AI evolve? Now I go with the metaphor. It is night. If you are at home, it is cold outside. You organize your com comfy and warm place around the fire. You maintain your life with care. Your life runs in cycles. Time is passing by. In this concentration, you develop engines and technical structures. Your life is on reflection, on education, on control and analysis of everything, including yourself and your psyche, of course, because you have time. The calculus, the engines, legality, the profit, the taxes, the <coughs> beauty and the beast. I'm not good in French. <laughs> the logic of thought, studies on uh, history. So all these Freud uh, psychoanalysis stuff, all these crime, Thing, Sherlock Holmes and so on, developed there. So this is how 18th, 19th century worked. Everything's proper. And you go inside and try to understand your soul. Now, an eternity, but only hours later, the sunrise. So this is 1900. Strong and warm. There's a whole world showing up outside in the bright sunlight quite different from your home you got comfortable with. Everything strange <clears throat> and in different colors. <laughs> Talking stories about their dreams of the night. There's a plenty of everything. It is rich, powerful and of all colors, of strange forms, fascinating. You go out and you're confused because they are not because <clears throat> they are not part of your orchestrated, orchestrated home. You join all these aliens as a migrant. And you start to learn to talk, to make your way out of the co cozy circles at home. So this is from the circular things in topological harmonic space in time towards the straight things uh, in to discover Earth space. This is the Copernican term. These are the friends you meet under the bright sunlight, <laughs> having their dreams. So you had dreams of the night, and they all have different dreams, and you know, have to talk about it. And these are the other aliens. These are the friends you meet. The TV, the automobile, the nuclear energy, the airplane, bubble gum, antibiotics, synthetic fertilizer, laser light, bikini, photovoltaic, electronic computers, set of windows, mobile phones. This is the list of the most important inventions of the 20th century in Wikipedia. <laughs> These are aliens. And they <laughs> turn the whole world 
Or, so if you put a mobile phone into a village, the village is turning around it. The TV set, think of everything turning, bikini, ship, everything's turning. Yeah? And it's doing everything. It, it's everywhere. So this, therefore, I think these are aliens. And they're doing it. And they have no mercy. And with that, things are growing like crazy on this new industrialized farmland, which just needs the sun to grow. 100 times more of everything compared just 100 years ago. And not only this, it's most irritating that things of value get inflationary. You simply copy things. These aliens just copy everything by these numbers. And not, and not only the things, but your social status. And you get worried about it, and it is complicated to keep your stance in style. So if we got this rich in stuff, I really can't understand why we complain that we can't be as prosperous as our parents. It's about, it's about the status. The problem is that we're complaining that we have to fight for our status. It's not about uh, uh, prosperity. So it's a, it's a scheinheilige Diskussion. Wir haben so viel mehr Zeug wie unsere und, aus, <lacht> und, und Möglichkeiten wie unsere Eltern. Wir können nicht sagen, wir werden ärmer wie unsere Eltern. Wir verlieren den Status, wenn wir uns nicht anstrengen. Und den muss man auch auskämpfen unter den, unter den neuen Generationen. Das ist nicht sicher, wie es nie war. Was ein gutes Zeichen für eine gesunde Gesellschaft ist. Deswegen sind wir ziemlich orthodox darüber zu jammern. Gut, also so sieht das aus auf einmal. Mit den ganzen Aliens. Urbanisierung. So, fassen wir mal zusammen. Die Frage ist also jetzt, why are we, are we not aware of these numbers? And talk about saving our planet, claiming we are poor. And the answer so far, if urbanization is industrialized farmland and it is growing like crazy, second, then the persons in charge, whoever they are, are the landlords. Third, and the others not knowing these numbers are the farmers. For, and as farm hands, they are doing right to act sustainable. And it is right to believe that this is good to save the planet. So the next question is, what is the source of power and who is in charge? Because I don't want to be a farmer, yeah? So, we make a pause and then it's right. So, Next question is, what is the source of power and who is in charge? Yeah? Now, cogito. <clears throat> we now go with mathematics, the royal path of knowledge, because it is uncorrupted by any pragmatics. First lesson, exponential growth is a fake story. So and then uh, I want to show you why. Numbers and orthogonality. There's a primary distinction in mathematics between geometry and the harmonics, between, I would suggest, for architects, space and time. So we, we develop these things. Even if uh, they are showing up, uh, for example, as um, time and frequency domain. Circles exploring space, they are passing by like waves of a drop dipped in the water. Lines counting waves in time. Lines do not meet waves as time do not need space. You can hear the waves and with it the space at a point in time. And you can see the time along a line cutting space. But you cannot see what you hear and you cannot hear what you see. So this is a diagram. A, a, a drop dipped in water and then it's covering space and circle and then you can see how it is uh, how it is expanding, how time passes by, just by cutting uh, the space. That's quite contra-intuitive. And our hypothesis is to make that, to synchronize time and space, which are orthogonal, to make that 
uh, uh, working together is, uh, uh, is uh, the question of intelligence, machine uh, or uh, human intelligence. They bring these things in consistence. There's always intelligence involved. To hear time creates meaning, so you see here. You cannot see what you hear, and the, uh, the uh, time is in lines and so, and so on. So, if you mix it the other way around, to hear time creates meaning, and to see space makes sense. So, and I would say, I like this, these are all precious pieces of intelligence active subjects. So they are circulating time and space. And by that they are vivid. If you just look at them as a spatial object, they are dead. If they just look at it as a chronological, as, as, a, as an object in time, they are passing by. So and they are vivid because they are circulating space and time. And by that they can move, they can react and, uh, with the light, drop, and so on. Yeah? I like this uh, quotation of, of Michel Serre, the French philosopher, that he says, uh, we, we have to think about intelligence like it rains. So it, so it's, uh, it, it rains. It's, so it, it, things passing by and then they meet and so on. And these circulations is intelligence. It's, it's omnipresent, it's there, just this kind of uh, status. At night, at home, you are circled in space, seeing time in repetitions to analyze the origin of space. A day out there, you are lined up in time, hearing the spatial synchronicity of the elements to explore the right way in time. Now you go to our mathematical instruments. This is a whole, a unity. This is you at home at night. And this is a part of it. The unity uh, is the space of your home, the partition shows the time passing by. So it's always uh, 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 turning things. Time passes by in circles. And this is how to measure time passing by with numbers. It's one by six. So this is how we address time with numbers. Numbers are on arithmetic is always about time. You can't see it. You hear it. So this is one fix, so the unity is one, and there's this fixed part of it. And this is all in circles. Numbers are always in circles. Therefore, the computing machine calculators are always in circles. And you can't see it. Both numbers are not of the same kind. The numerator is a counting part, is counting parts in time. The denominator represents the fiction of a unity of space in a pragmatic refinement. So this is of time, and the unity is in space. This is your house. And so this is your house, and this is what you're doing here, in circles. It's very important to see these things. That is, all numbers have always both uh, components. You have the odd and the even numbers. The same, and so this was with the Egyptian uh, mathematics and arithmetic, it was the odd and the even, and so the, same, the same thing. The, uh, and uh, here you have the fractions with, uh, with uh, the Greeks. The numerator plays at night, the denominator is a memory of the day. It is with all numbers like that, with even and the odd numbers, or with the real and the imaginary parts of the, the complex numbers of today. So today, these are the numbers. So we have the real numbers, this is in space, and this is the, the uh, imaginary part, this is the time. And this is, these are the numbers how computers work, quantum physics work, and so on. You can't play it with these numbers or with these numbers. Yeah? But the principle is the same. It always turns, it's, it's circulating one with the other. And this is what I think is here. It's, it's, it's just turning time and space. And then it's getting vivid. And we need intelligence to be able to see that. Like with, with Google, you have to ask nice questions, then 
it's getting. The better you ask, the nicer it gets. It thinks. Means it's turning time and space. These are time capsules. Always capsules of time. They have all their history and so on. This is what we have like to see. Which is here. This is time capsules. Good. The last sunset. The Euler number brings home the idea of the space of the last day. So this is how the Euler number is, is done. It's all the possible uh, fractional multiplications. And this is a number which is uh, like pi. It has no repetition. It's ir 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 an, an irrational number. So, and uh, this is complicated to understand, but I would say the Euler number is the engine to run your home. So this is the energy to turn these circles. So without the Euler, so with that you can measure time in, at your home and you, you, you push it to make a metaphor for that. It rotates time overnight. The Euler number makes a chronological partition in time real. So you can see time passing by. So you can see the traces of things passing by in time. Without the Euler number, you can't measure them. They're not there. With the Euler number, the calculus gets productive and real. The Euler number creates meaning. This is what we call education, refinement, optimization, the quest for beauty, enlightenment. This is how the engine works, and this is how the engine works at night over time at home. This is what we call what we call qualitative growth or the learning curve. So and here we see that's always very complicated. That's a formula for the learning curve. What you see is a fraction. This is a unity. That's a dream of the last day, the memory of the last day. And this is how the night, the time runs in, at night. It's a denominator. So you have the Euler number here. So therefore it runs in time. So the beauty of that is, these are some parameters. This is the learning curve. And it came up around uh, 17... 50, 1780 uh, with, with, uh, uh, with Euler. And you see what we have is a learning curve. So this is a, a qualitative growth. So it's an inner growth, a growth of the soul. So this is what we, the growth of is always like this. So it's getting very uh, complicated to start. Then you are very fast. And it always slows down and, um, and uh, goes to a certain uh, level. So this is the invention of enlightenment. How to run your home at the time of your home in around 1750 until 1900. This is industrialization, enlightenment, and so on. Everything works like that with these mathematics. So that's the engine of 18th, 19th century. So, all classifications, Darwin, constructions, productions, and infrastructures are working like that. They are educated and real, and they never find an end in time. They run towards infinity, they operate within, within the eternal infinity of the circle. Und das sagen wir immer, wenn, dass wir noch mehr üben müssen, bis wir dann fertig sind, oder dass es nie ein Ende findet und all diese Dinge. Und dass Perfektion immer, immer, immer schwieriger wird und all diese Dinge. Alles diese, äh, diese Vorstellung, die mathematisch so gefasst wird. Nicht anders. Das ist das Schöne an der Mathematik. Sie ist nicht korrumpiert von irgendwas. Und das hat keinen Nutzen. So, now... 150 years later, and the last sunrise. The sunrise on the other side is not about numbers. At a new day, outside under the sun, out there, you have to affirm that the reality of our chronological calculus at home is not of primary importance. 
If you step out into the sunlight of a new day and you see the strong shadows, and you see especially that the ratio of the, of the things and their shadows under the sun are beyond calculability. So you can't reach it with the oil number, with your engine of thinking, of improvement, of beauty, and so on. They are all, uh, they are irrational and not numbers. And they're yet obviously there, and you mark them with a symbol, not with a number. And that's the square root of two, for example. This is the gnomon, or the, uh, the stalas, a triangle. You have uh, a stick, you have the ground. If this is one and this is one, this is square root of two, and therefore this is not real. That's very important. That's a number which is not calculable. It's beyond calculability. So the Euler number and the engine of the night can't reach it. But it's most obviously it's there. Therefore, this line here is not real. It's not a number because you can't calculate it. And you simply say, because it's there, symbolize it. Make a symbol for that. So with this rucksack of symbols, not numbers, you can leave eternal time of calculability at home. And you navigate freely in space out there because you trust your cogito. You navigate between the real things of numbers and this is a cogito algorithm of Descartes. That's ratio, that's rational instead of real. Now the three geometries. We did that. We did it with a line of writing 500 before BC to face objective things as subjects in space. So we did this writing. We turn these areas in, in circles. This is how we illustrate it today. But the writing was something like that. And the geometry of the Greeks never had been drawn. It was talking about seconds, about the irrational things, and bringing that instability with the phonetical writing, not drawing it. So we did it again with the horizon of the drawing uh, 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 14th century to face objective things in space as moving subjects in time. So then you see we start to draw, we don't write anymore, and again, instead of turning things in, in, a, in, in a plane, we can turn these things in, in time. So if we are not able to turn them, it's not a cube. It can be anything. You have to put and go around and then you say, okay, it's a virtual cube. So you need time. And as we need time to, 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 uh, to get things as graphics, we need here the space, we need the, the right thing to get things decoupled from objects in space, so discover space. It's complicated to see, but we are used to this, time and space, and it was the same thing to decouple things, uh, space from things, uh, the Greeks, with these kind of schemes of uh, triangle and whatever, what you learned at school. And how to do it was this. How to do this is here. And again, a parallel, and therefore I strongly believe that we are in a digital renaissance. With the diagonal axis of the Google metrics today, we face objective things in time as vivid subjects in life. What we have here. We always turn the whole planet and can ask any question. Like we can turn any object, any piece, any space in time, like we can have any, any space decoupled from objects. And we are always faking reality. This is always how we work on the hypotenuse getting rid of, real, uh, real, uh, of reality. Playing the new world and the, and the new day just on this irrational stuff. So, 
I find it very striking, these three levels of abstraction. I would call them space, time, and today life suggest. But this is my uh, very, there is no reference for that. I said that. The geometry of life was developed from 1880 to 1920. The schemes of computing had been developed around 1930. Von Neumann machine is uh, 1934. Follows the athletics of computing. This is uh, the athletics of computing. This is how we understand computers, that it's a kind of production line. So we have a flow diagram. How, so these are our ideas how computers work, like a production, like a factory. And this is from a Neumann machine. This was developed in uh, 1934. Uh, this is the athletics of computers, the body of computing. And the lambda calculus, 36, from Alonzo uh, Church, is a model of the intellect of computing. This is what I like Mathematica. This is uh, the intellectual thing. This is flat. It's, it's a production line of data. And this is circular. I call it circle of writing. So these are the stages of development. The first stage of development, technical development. So the, uh, the, it, uh, it was invented conceptually 1880, 1920. Therefore, I think Corbusier is an alien. So he just had not access to a computer. The thinking was there most prominent and more, most explicit with all these, 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 these uh, guys and, and these people there, most dominant than, than today. Today we always think it's done. They explicitly understood what quantum physics was, what the underlying mathematics was. Look at, look it up, look at the constructivists, for example, the Russian constructivists, was amazing what they understood. They really have been part of the intellectual game of their time, the scientific game what we can say today. <clears throat> so this is mainframe, there is a technical development. The first stage is <coughs> uh, this. The body of thinking is structuralism, what you can uh, see. The language is Algol, Fortran, Pascal. The form is to design, to discussion. The structure is given. And the principal problem is a combinatoric explosion. You can look up these concepts. And the artifacts and the users are this. So this is how we behave. And these are the interfaces. And these are the aliens. And these are the houses. So my hypothesis is, in a platinary system, if it is a Copernican turn around 1900, then everything turns. And if everything turns, you, there's not a layout of a history. So there's not a sequence of things. So they have, have to think in repetitions and constellations. So if in a planetary system, things repeat. But the moment you, you wait, so everything changes all the time. The only consistency is things at the same time of the same thinking. So there's no, no real, there's, there's no clear a line, if things turn to another constellation, there's no proper line of argumentation anymore because you follow the line of the, uh, of the square root of two and the symbolization has no calculation which is able to transfer uh, one to the other in the constellation. Therefore, you have to trust that the planets in a certain uh, constellation are of the same body of thinking, we call it. Therefore, here, 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 must be of the same. And there's no reason for it. Personal computers, the second stage around 1900, uh, 1980. Post-structuralism, languages, small talk, C++, Java. The form is free, and the structure now is uh, to design. So this is what we call uh, parametrism today. So you make a certain program, and then you can deform it, whatever. So this is the technical implementation of PC. It's post-structuralism on a technical level. The principal problem is a framing problem. You can look it up. 
And the artifacts are these. Infantilization, computer says touch me, these are the interfaces, everything in parallel, there's no clear sequence how to follow and what to do next, so it's up to the user to do that, not the computer says what is to be really done, he asks what do you want next, invites you, treats you as a kid, and these are the aliens, and these are the houses. So, <laughs> there's no reason, it's just the constellation. The internet, third stage of development from 2000, the body of thinking, I don't know how to name it. The language is XML. The form is free and the structure is free. This is why internet is working. And the principal problem is what to do. You can't trust, this. so therefore we have all the things. We don't really know what to do. There's no reason for anything anymore. And the artifacts and the users are these. The interfaces are these. It's like a comic. Yeah? And these are the migrants out there. And these are the houses out there. So I don't think there is a next phase. That's it. Because form and structures are free. So we made it. And then this is... Uh, Therefore, I think around 2000, we entered Baroque. So the globalization finished. And we know technically how to do it, and we put all the finances into this paradigm of XML, and that's it. And now we have a kind of physical phenomena. So the internet works exactly on a technical level, like these principal inventions in mathematics from 1880 to 1920. Before that, it was some simple projections. First black and white and color, and now we have full, we have, we have full capacity to turn the planet uh, as we like in, in a kind of physical manner. That's the 20th century. That's Renaissance. So, they have now come 